Welcome to the Leadership Purpose with Dr. Robin podcast. I'm your host, Robin L. Owens, PhD. And this is where we dive in each week to give advice, tools, and tips for high achieving, purpose minded women who've written nonfiction books and want to amplify their message beyond the book. I'm a college professor, and when I'm not doing that, I am speaking, coaching, mentoring, and teaching high achieving women who have written books how to use their books to make a bigger difference, have more impact and purpose. Okay, let's dive in. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Leadership Purpose with Dr. Robin podcast. I'm so glad you're here and that you take time to listen into the podcast. I really, really appreciate you. I say it over and over again, and I will continue to say it over and over again. There's so much you could be doing with your time. And thank you for spending your time with us and helping us get into the top 10 podcasts according to Listen Notes. So we appreciate you. And if it's gone over and rate, review, subscribe, that'll help us even further. Okay, so now today I'm talking with Christy Garcia. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Christy. Christy is a leadership coach, speaker, facilitator, contributor to Forbes Coaches Council, and founder of Mindful Choice Leadership Academy. She has 19 years experience in sales, recruiting, and leadership development. And for the last decade, she has worked with current and upcoming leaders from fast-growing organizations, including Airbnb, Twitter, Movement for Life, and more. Christy builds programs that helps individuals and teams maximize their impact. And one of her superpowers is helping her clients manage their ego and build authentic confidence so they can show up 100% in both business and life. Welcome, Christy Garcia. Thank you, Robin, for having me. And congratulations, top 10. That's amazing. Good for you. Thank you. Yes, I'm so excited about that. really appreciate that. All right, so now let's just jump right in. You heard me kind of read your official introduction bio. Why don't you tell us in your own words more about who you are and then what you do? Yeah, thanks for that. Um, You know, I am at the simplest version these days. I feel like I am a mom, a wife, a business owner, just trying to survive in the chaos of the world. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm sure many of your listeners can relate to that. It's it's been a weird time. And, you know, thank goodness for the ego management. I have to practice what I preach every day. But uh, that's really what I focus on is helping people figure out the chaos in their their business, in their world, so that they can find more peace, really focus on what matters, prioritize the real priorities. So at the end of the day, they feel accomplished, they feel proud, and again, authentically confident in their own leadership, um, so they can show up with more intention both today and tomorrow. Yeah, I love that. Because like you say, who doesn't want that, especially in these times, and if you're doing all the things. Now, this, this podcast, let me just say a little bit, we talked about this a little bit before we came on, but let me just say, The podcast is geared toward high achieving women. And this is what I mean by high achieving women, women who are professional, ambitious, responsible Mm -hmm. in their personal life, kind of like what you are alluding to and in your professional life, people come to you for all the things. And I thought, well, who supports the high achieving women? Because they do, they're good at lots of different things. And people just feel like, well, they don't need support because it looks so easy. And so I thought, take the podcast and we can talk to each other. (laughs) I love that. I love that. We all need more support. Yes. And we'll come from our individual experience and expertise and talk to each other. And lately I've been having our guests talk to women who are doing their own businesses and have written a book and, and, and. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Absolutely. None of us are doing just one thing anymore. That's it. That's it. So that's what we're talking to today. All right. So now. Tell us how you came to do the work you're doing. You know, I think at first it was uh, my own journey. I started out just doing kind of life coach training. Wasn't really sure where it was going to lead me. My boss told me about it. I'm like, sure, I'll check it out. Um, Kind of thought of life coaching as a little bit of a hokey thing back in the day because this was before it was kind of cool and trendy. And as I went through the program, I realized, wow, this actually could be used in business. And that was, I was at the time looking to start my own business. I wasn't sure really which direction to go. You know, I tried real estate and I've tried travel agencies and all these fun little uh, positions. And the business side of me really wanted something more intrigued with business still, more ingrained in, you know, something with that structure and that formality. 
uh, versus just being a contractor and a contributor to someone else's stuff. Uh, so I got into the leadership training and I think the biggest thing that happened was I went to Toronto. So I did most of my training in the Bay area and it was a little too, you know, touchy feely. I needed that personally. So that was actually really big growth for me, but for business wise, I needed to see that kind of rough, tough, like business side of it. And so I went out to Toronto and did some trainings and I got that East coast, like hardcore vibe going on. And it was awesome. It was great. It's where I was able to see, wow, we need more of this. My ultimate goal was to bring humans back to business. That was always a big thing of mine when I was in sales. And that's really what I started to create is how do I bring the human back to business? Um, when I was 29, I had a 30 foot fall and I started to realize my own ego and how it was making me think life was great and fulfilled. And I was happy. I was living the dream. And when I had to stop because of my injuries, you know, it was like, Whoa, I don't know how to emotionally be available to others. If we're not having fun, if we're not traveling, if, if I'm not controlling the situation, um, so on paper, I looked like I was this happy, go lucky, everything was fine businesswoman. And when I had to stop, it was like, whoa, I'm actually not feeling satisfied. I'm not very fulfilled. I don't have meaningful relationships. I had a ton of amazing friends and people in my life. I just wasn't emotionally available to them. So, you know, I didn't really know what that meant until that moment where I had to sit back and say, wow, who would I actually call and tell that I just fell 30 feet and I might need some help? Um, and that was a weird reality for me, to be honest, because I did not think I was that girl. I really thought I had deep, meaningful interactions. And I truly thought I was satisfied with my life because from a day-to-day -day space, I really was. And, and I think that was, that was that eye opening moment. I was in, um, wound care cells at the time. So I was in hospitals every day and I was talking to all these people, mostly men who were in their 60s, you know, dying by themselves. And I just never understood. Why are you in the hospital by yourself? It's such a sad story to me. And it was always the common theme of I put my career before my family or I worked so hard that I wasn't there when the things really mattered. And that was such a sad story for me. My parents had been divorced, you know, and it just seemed like, wow, I don't want to be that person. And I think the reality that I had after my fall was I was going to be that person. And it wasn't because I, I wasn't there for them. I didn't make space to even create that as an option. I was so focused on my career and my success. And it became, you know, if I was a success, successful businesswoman, everything else will fall into place. And really that's not how it works. You have to create space to have success in all avenues of your life. And if you want personal success, you have to make space for that too. And really the type of person I was, you know, the controller ego that is task and goal oriented if I don't put those kind of tasks, those personal tasks and those personal goals on my to-do list, then they get overlooked mm -hmm. and I am all business focused, right? And so I started to see the patterns, started to realize there are going to be so many more women in this hospital in 20, 30 years from now, because, you know, back in the day, it was the men that were working hard. Moms were, you know, taking care of the household where now it's moms are working just as hard. And a lot of times the men are staying home and taking care of the household. So uh, that was kind of a break, heartbreaking reality for me. And I really shift gears and started building mindful choice to stop the madness. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you survived the fall. Yeah. <laughs> the fall was good. I was very lucky. It was God's sign. Honestly, I walked away. I was in the hospital for only four hours and had three stitches. It was really wild. Wow. Yeah. God was just saying, wake up, girl, get out there and make some magic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you did because now you made that switch and we have the wisdom of your experience today. But yeah, I can imagine Thank you. I can shake you up. Wow. And I understand that idea of feeling in my young, my first real professional role outside of college, I was in a leadership position and really completely unfulfilled and felt like I didn't mm -hmm. have any in work. And so that set me on this, this course to find meaning and purpose in my life and work. And it's interesting to hear you say you had meaningful relationships and it was all kind of outward, but inside mm -hmm. you found out there was something that needed to change. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And most of us don't ever stop or slow down long enough, right? Until there is a tragedy or a crisis to even know that that feeling's there. Yeah. And I think that's where self-awareness is a huge part of fulfillment and happiness. If you do not stop long enough to check in with yourself, life will pass you by yeah. because we can all be happy to some degree, especially when we're successful. Yeah. 
And is that what you teach your clients, some form of self-awareness, what you learned in that experience and then built on in your training? Yeah. So my whole niche is ego management. Um, And ego, how I refer to that is we all have one. Um, It's our unconscious brain that, you know, has uh, that motivates us from our old beliefs, mindsets, and behaviors that show up unconsciously. And so they sabotage our success. They sabotage our relationships, our communication. And ultimately, you know, they're the things that trigger us when we aren't aware of them. And so step one of ego management is self-awareness. Step two is ownership. And so we really deep dive into the self-awareness and ownership component before we can even get to how to manage the ego. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And I could see really make a difference and transform others' lives. Tell me what, when you're doing this work, what really lights you up about it? This work is so magical. You know, I think it's one of those, I don't know why I was blessed with this content. I don't know why I was blessed with the wisdom, but for whatever reason, it is such an amazing thing to watch people identify those insecurities. You know, how, no matter how successful we are, no matter how confident we seem to be, we all have insecurities. We all have imposter syndrome. And, you know, from day to day, they show up differently, right? And so I think being able to help people just recognize that, especially powerful, incredible, successful leaders in the world that on the stage, they look like they got it all together, but you get them behind the curtain and now you get to hear their fears, their realness, and they're, you know, why they're chasing the ghost as well. And so helping people just to learn to stop, uh, mm-hmm. recognize, you know, I'm I'm doing a good enough job today. I'm good enough. Mm-hmm. And that when, I, when someone can really let that click, it's so magical. This weekend, I have a client that got voted um, woman of influence for her community. And, you know, it's just so powerful because you can, you've watched her transform over the last year and a half, start her business And within a year and a half, she's become this magical figure in the community that people are inspired by. And how she's seen herself was just this, you know, kind of hazmat girl that didn't have all this confidence. And she was working for someone else. She never thought she could run her own business. And when she got that authentic confidence, when she learned to manage that ego and control her own brain, it was like, she's just free. She's free to be who she is and to just live with intention and be satisfied. It's great. Yeah, that's a wonderful, a wonderful illustration to connect the work you do with, in this case, business success, mm-hmm. which makes me think of some of the women who might be listening now who are consultants and written books, so they're authors. And I'm interested to know, how does the ego drive, because I know you talk about ego drive, mm-hmm. how does that um, impact this woman who I just described earlier, who is now tasked with marketing her book in hopes to continue to grow her business? You know, I think one, the ego can look very different for everybody. So you've got the complier ego who wants to be liked and wants to be validated. Um, You've got the- Let's let's pause because I know you know the, (laughs) and I want to catch it again. So the complier ego, okay. Say that one again. So the complier ego is the um, ego type that wants to be liked. It's motivated by, you know, people. And so how to take care of people, how to make sure people like you, how to make sure people are, you know, you have the compassion and all that stuff. Unfortunately, what happens with the complier is sometimes they struggle to make decisions. They struggle to hold themselves accountable or others accountable. They struggle to um, give the hard truth and really give the feedback that's needed in order for growth to happen. Sometimes they don't even know who they are because they've complied and like kind of just done what others want, go along to get along for so long that they really struggle with their own personal identity. Like, who am I without X? And that that becomes really tough, especially if you're talking about marketing a book, right? Um, there can be a lot of struggle of, well, who, you know, am I going to upset anybody if this if there's any controversy in this, you know, book topic? Uh, or maybe they are just sugarcoating so much that the purpose of what they're doing is getting lost. And so there's a lot of things that that ego can do. It could also just, you know, go into self-doubt. A lot of times the complier ego will constantly compare themselves to others. They're never as good as someone else, which just obviously really holds them back on their confidence to say, hey, this is an awesome book. Go out and read it. Right. And so I think that's where we have to pull from all three egos. So the complier ego really has to pull more from the controller, the controller's ego. um, That's more of the goal-oriented, results-oriented 
gets to the finish line. That's the the passion that got them to write the book to begin with, right? Like you have to have some controller in to be able to run your own business. And so when the controller is kicked in, unfortunately, a lot of times what happens with the controller, it's task first, people second. So again, I'm a controller. Uh, a lot of times, you know, we are driven by success. We're driven by results. We want to get to the finish line. We will get to the finish line usually first. Sometimes we're there by ourselves. Yeah, so we usually get to the finish line first. We usually get there with a trophy. Unfortunately, a lot of times we will be there by ourselves. And so what happens with the controller ego is we tend to micromanage. We over control to fill in control. We could um, come across as too direct and intense because we're moving so fast. It's like, get on the freight train or we're going to run you over. But we are also very charismatic and likable. So it's, you know, we can get those followers. We just have to make sure we nurture them with the complier. So again, you have to pull across the aisle in order to balance out your ego. Okay. So that was then, the, com- mm-hmm, the, the com- controller. Controller. And the first one yep. was? Complier. Complier, controller. And okay. So yep. now, next one. Yep. And then the third one is the protector. And the protector is where all of our values live. This is where our integrity, our authenticity, our courageous truth lives. Unfortunately, with that, when we have strong value system, when we have, you know, courageous authenticity, when we believe in ourselves, this is, can also be very black and white, which can make us incredibly stubborn. We love deeply from our protector. It's actually the one that loves the most. So compliers care a lot, but sometimes for the motivator of just being liked, where protectors care deeply because of their soul, right? Like it's that soul love, which can make them very loyal, very committed. Um, unfortunately, with that being said, it can also create a lot of walls and boundaries, right? They can get the most deeply hurt. And so it's like they, everybody's kind of arm distance away. Lots of compartmentalizing goes on. So this group knows this about me. This group knows this about me. So I think when you're thinking about selling a book in this area, making sure that you drop those guards and really allow people to hear your story, not just the book, but make it, you know, humanize it and really make it relatable. Um, a lot of times the Protector is a high level thinker, very visionary. So sometimes getting down into the details, it's hard. So they can talk to, um, to broad where if you're selling something specific. You want to get into kind of some of those talking points that are a little more nitty gritty. So people can get the girth of it. Uh, yes. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I'm imagining you have some uh, assessment that helps people determine which of these categories they are primarily falling. I imagine we might have some combination, but is that Yes, right? absolutely. Yes, we do have a 360. Um, and what I love about the tool is that actually, it really shows you the um, your self-awareness gap. So it's kind of the first step to self-awareness, like how aware are you current impact? And then it's got the 360 component. So everybody else around you gets to evaluate you. So you get to see the real life gaps of what behaviors are you aware of? Which unconscious behaviors are you not? What are your reactive tendencies? Um, the other thing that I love about it is it shows you when you cross over. So, you know, I believe that our strengths are weaknesses. And so when we are a great communicator, we can also be an over communicator, which is also not good, right? And so knowing when do I cross over 33% and start to overuse? When we overuse, that typically is the unconscious ego. When we manage our ego and we use it at that 33%, we're usually being more intentional. And so we're using more of our creative leadership brain that covers everybody. Um, and we're having to pull from all three egos versus just one. And so really knowing kind of, you know, what does my best self look like if I pull from all three? How do we know when it's 33% when we're operating at an optimal 33%? You know, I think one, it feels good. Like there's uh-huh. no doubt in your mind. You can look in your mirror and be like, damn, I did a good job today. I'm so proud of me. Um, you know, so I think, it, again, it's that authentic confidence. And if you did a really crummy job, you say, you know what? Today I sucked and I'm okay with that too. Right. And like, again, it's just being real. Uh, when you get to be your 33%, you get to just own all your good, bad, and ugly. There's no show. There's no having to be all fancy all the time. There's no having to put your mask on all the time. You just get to be real. People will love or hate you and you don't care. This is just who I am. Take it or leave it. And there's freedom in that. So I think that's when you, that's when you know. Your 33% would look different than mine, right? And I think that's the beauty of it is it really allows people to just own your greatness. What's your unique greatness to the world? And why should people see more of it? Which is really powerful when you're talking about selling a book, right? Because that's really what it's about. Um, going back to my client who's you know woman of influence, I think... One of the things that's made her so impactful in the community is she has brought her whole self to her business, you know, through social media. 
she shares so much of her personal vulnerability that it inspires people, right? That's not how I would ever run my my image because that's just not me. But for her, it's so incredibly powerful and relatable and charming and people want to listen and just meet her. They come into her shop just to meet her because of her social media. You know, so it's it's just such a great way to allow people. Like, who am I? What do I want the world to see? And then you just get to be you. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, which of the egos is that? client that you described primarily or when she started is she primarily yep so she um is a complier controller i believe yeah complier controller so she you know people first and then she had to bring her controller to the game and she is just rocking it it's so <laughs> fun to watch her just care about the people care about her business um and really bring that authentic courageous realness to everything she does you know, she doesn't double guess herself anymore. She just trusts it and runs with it. That's wonderful. If you talk to yeah. her, tell her we said congratulations. <laughs> I will. I will. I know. We're so proud of it. We're going to celebrate her on Saturday. <laughs> okay. So now uh, you gave us uh, so many gems from the, the three egos. But let me ask you this question because I just asked everybody this question. Is there anything else from your experience or expertise you will tell the high achieving woman who's doing all the things and just trying to keep all life and business and work together. Is there anything else you would share? Any tip or advice? Yeah, you know, I think the thing that comes to mind first and foremost is slow down and enjoy the journey. We move so fast. We have a million things that go on in our brain all day long and we kind of miss the fun of what we're doing. We lose sight of the, the little details, even if they're yucky ones. Like that's the lesson, that's the journey, that's the fun part, right? And when we miss those because we're so busy, they just overwhelm us. They stress us out and they start to create chaos. So I, I'm a real believer, number one way to manage your ego is slow down, think through what you're doing and find the good, right? Uh, I We just adopted my husband and I. And so for the last seven months, you know, our, our motto is we do hard things and we get to do this. Um, so, you know, I think that's always a good reminder for anyone who's busy. Um, when you're stressed out and you just wish the kids would behave or you wish the business would go well or you wish this thing, just remember you get to do this. This is a choice. You get to do this. And if you don't like it, then change it. Choose a different way. Otherwise, just be grateful because you get to do this. Yeah. And you can do hard things. Wonderful. Yeah. And congratulations to you and your husband in that, in that case. Thank you. Thank you. That has been life-changing for sure. I Learning think. how to be a businesswoman, <laughs> two toddlers <laughs> instantly oh, is wow. wild. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I'm feeling like you can do it. You and your husband, you can do it. You we do our things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you know, the, the podcast, I call it leadership purpose. Uh, so in your opinion, given your work and just your worldview, do you think it's important to have purpose in your work? And if so, why? And if not, why not? I think purpose is a loaded word. I think it means something different for all of us. I think purpose is important to life as a whole, but some people's purpose isn't necessarily to have a job that they love and they you know, need true deep purpose in, right? Some people just need to have a means to be able to live this bigger purpose outside of work. So I, I'm not sure I would answer that, that yes, you have to have purpose in work. I think having a very clear definition of what success and purpose looks like in your personal life allows you to fill those gaps in every other category of your world, whether it's your relationships, whether it's your business, whether it's your spirituality, right? And I think that's what's really important about purpose. It's not necessarily one thing gives us that, but find your gifts, right? Be happy. Whatever you choose to do, be happy so that at the end of the day, you know, I always say on your 90th birthday, you can sit there and say, damn, I lived a good life and I had purpose, right? Yes. Yes. All right. I mean, uh, Christy, you've been so generous with your time. Now, is there anything else that you'd like to share with our audience before we can tell them where they can get in touch with you? Uh, anything maybe I forgot to ask you or something's on your mind? Anything else? You know, I think in just general, I like to tell fast working, you know, successful people, especially, you know, people who are living multiple lives, um, being able to just, if you don't learn to control your mind, someone or somebody else will, right? And I think that's the biggest thing with ego management. If you don't control your mind, your ego will, and it will sabotage your relationships, your happiness, your goals, your success. 
So really understanding, like do the work, get, figure out, you know, what is that ego? It's a lifelong journey. Trust me, I've been doing this for 13 years now and my ego just showed up last night, right? Like it shows up every day. It's not going to ever go away. And so the more aware you are of it, the more authentic, more real, more confident you can be in everything you do. So yeah, be 1% better every day. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Absolutely. So glad to have you here. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right. So where can people be in touch with you? Um, You can find me on my website, mindfulchoiceacademy.com. We actually are just looking to recruit for a uh, the Mindful Choice Founder Circle. We're looking for 12 to 15 uh, founders who are looking for that support. It will be both male and females, but lots of inspiring, great um, insight from people doing the same stuff. So if anybody's interested in that, they can find us at the Mindful Choice uh, LinkedIn, Christy Garcia or Mindful Choice Leadership Academy, and then also your social media sites. But yeah, reach out, email, send me a phone call, anything. I'd love to always talk ego or just talk about life and business and good books. So. Okay, great. And we'll make sure to put that in the show notes. So thanks again Thank you. for being here. Okay, everyone. And if you want more about me, you can find me on my website. Robin L. Owens.com, Robin L. Owens.com, or you can find me on social media. I'm mostly on LinkedIn, but you can find me on all the socials at Robin L. Owens, PhD, Robin L. Owens, PhD. And if you're an author and you've been thinking about turning your book into a course and just didn't quite know how to get started or have questions about it, head on over to my other site, createmasterfulcourses.com, createmasterfulcourses.com and get my free training where I gathered my over a decade of experience and expertise teaching to help you turn your book into what I call a masterful course. So that's at createmasterfulcourses.com. And until next time, this is Dr. Robin. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Leadership Purpose with Dr. Robin podcast. If you enjoyed it, head on over and rate and subscribe so you never miss an episode. New episodes drop every week and I can't wait to hang out with you again soon. Meanwhile, this is Dr. Robin signing off. See you next time.